10 gigabit ethernet is usually pretty expensive. I mean, you get your super expensive switches, network cards, you gotta get the fancy cabling and blah, 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 it's expensive. But no, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can get 10 gig networking between two computers for as low as $40. Let's get started. Okay, so you guys probably guessed we're going to buy a couple of network cards off eBay, these SFP Plus cables connected to computers, pretty boppity boo, we're good to go. Yeah, pretty much. So the two computers I'm trying to connect are my personal rig here. You can see how I made all of that up here. I'm connecting that to my server. You can see me building that in the playlist up here. Awesome. So, I mentioned in the last video working on the server that the bottleneck was the network because the way I have it set up, it uses automatic SSD caching before it goes into a RAID array of hard drives. So, that's pretty fast and it's and always my transfer speeds are at 110-ish megs per second, which is gigabit speeds. So, I'm go I jokingly upgrade said that I need to upgrade to 10 gig, but that's too expensive. Now I can do it for 40 bucks. So, I went to eBay and I tried to find some parts. I found these beauties. I want to take it out of its packaging now. This is the Mellanox Connect X2 uh, 10 gig network card uses SFP plus the works. Um, they're 20 bucks from a company called uh, Esiso. Esiso? Yes, ISO. I'm not sure. It's something like that. Um, they're retailers, so they sell a lot of these. They've sold like 600 so far. They're used. Um, they're in perfect cosmetic condition as far as I'm concerned. So for 20 bucks, you get one of these, and you also get one of these. SFP Plus cables, so that you can actually, you know, use it. And it just goes in there. This side goes into your switch or into the other card. And that's that. Um, so for this, I got two of these. So I have extra cables, I guess. Spare cables. So step one, let's install these cards. Yeah. So once you've installed it in Windows 10, it should be plug and play. Um, some people will really recommend that you install this WinOS software. Do not do that. That caused problems for me. But here it is. If it does not show up in network adapters, it will most likely show up here in system devices, as you can see here. What I did is I just disabled the device, re-enabled it, scanned for hardware changes, and then it worked. So here it is, and then you go to Network and Sharing Center, and here you have Ethernet 2 with the Mellanox Connect X2 Ethernet adapter. So now we get it configured in Linux, connect the two with the cable, and we should be off to the races. So on Linux, it's also very plug and play, but there are a few things you're going to need to configure as well. So first thing, type ifconfig-a. So this will tell us our existing network connections. There should be three now. One of them is going to be the built-in Ethernet port on the motherboard. One of them is going to be the new 10 gig card, and one of them is going to be a loopback. You don't want to touch the loopback one. So in my case, I have ENP2S0 and ENP4S0, where the 4 is the built-in 1 gig connection on the motherboard, and the 2S0 is the new 10 gig card that I entered. So once you've determined which one is which, you want to look at your built-in one and look at the IP address that it's been already assigned. Oh, excuse me, that has been already assigned. So in my case, it's 10.0.0.10. Next, you want to type sudo vi slash etc slash network slash interfaces. So this is where we'll assign the IP addresses. So 
you're going to make sure that, in my case, EMP4S0, the built-in one, it's set to iFace, EMP4S0, init DHCP, and then here, to make sure that it can differentiate between the two, and know that this one will be used for accessing the internet, you want to type gateway, and then, so since the IP is 10.0.0.10, I'm going to set the gateway as 10.0.0.1. So whatever those first three numbers is, and then make the last one, last digit, a one. And that's the gateway. So now it knows that when to, ac to access the internet, it's going to go through here. Next, this is something you're going to have to add yourself. Auto ENP2S0, in my case. I face ENP2S0, init static. So this means that you will be assigning the IP address. And this is critical because you want to assign very similar IP addresses, at least the first three digits, on both sides, on both the Linux side and the Windows side. So address I set to 10.10.0.200 because on the Windows side I set it to 10.10.0.100. Then netmask 255.255.255.0 and no gateway because you're not going through the internet with this. And that's it. So after you set this, press escape to and I'm assuming you know how to use the VI editor here to be able to add all these things, but once you're done, escape, colon X to save, then IF config ENP2S0 up, oops, sorry, sudo IF config ENP2S0 up, then do the same thing with the other one, so sudo IF config ENP4S0 up, and then reboot the system. Once you've rebooted, do if config dash a, just to make sure that all your IP addresses are correct. Then try pinging ping google.com to make sure that the internet is still working, which in my case, it still is. Control C to exit. So then you're done on the Linux side, you go back over on the Windows side and check to make sure everything is working properly. Okay, so now it's set up in Linux. Now we gotta set up an IP here, IP address here. So right click properties, find at TCP IPv4 properties, and we are going to change this. So it's 10.0.0. We're going to make this one 100. Subnet mask is going to say the same default gateway be 10.0.0.1. Okay. Right click validate settings upon exit. Okay. Close. Close the trophy. Now it's identifying. Unidentified network. So now we're going to go here and network up. When we go to network, it should pop up right around here. Here it is. Boom. Okay. So now I'm going to do a sample test to uh, here we go. Transfer the LGG5 follow up video. Copy. Paste. And we should be seeing 300 megabytes per second. But that's not fast enough. I mean, it's already great, but it's not fast enough. So, we're going to uh, cancel that. Delete all of those. And we're going to make it faster. So, to increase performance, go to PC, Local Disk, Windows, System32, Then search for host here, open file location, open with, notepad, and then here. Now add the IP address of the other device. 
file, save. Okay. Ah, but you don't have permission. No. So you're going to go to desktop, hosts, all files, save. Okay, then you can close that, move this here. You'll need to provide administrator permission. And then here, boom, 400. So this is about the speed of the drive. So this would no longer be a network bottleneck. It would be the actual drive bottleneck. But still, it, a 10 gig file is now transferring in just about a minute. That is impressive. And I, and I think I can... And I think it's safe to say, mission accomplished. Once the speed goes, there we go. See, look at that, look at that. Mission accomplished. I'm gonna cancel it. And that's it. That's how you can easily set up a 10 gig network between two computers running either Windows or Linux for just $40. And yeah, that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Leave a like if you did. Leave a comment down below telling me if you've tried this. Maybe you did something different your thoughts, leave it all in the comments down below. And don't forget to subscribe to see more cool videos like this one, and I'll see you guys in the next one.